Hello, and welcome. My name is Edwin, and I am the E3 avatar. I will guide you using Parabens E3 through various data types. We will start by looking at Windows data. E3 can examine a variety of different file systems. These include Windows, Linux, and Mac. I'm going to show you Windows. When we look at Windows, one of the highlights is the E3 data triage. I will start this by opening our Windows image and going directly to the data triage. This very fast process allows me to see one chat database and three cloud storages. There are two email databases and one of them is active. There are also two browser data sources. I am going to open a very common artifact email. E3 will be able to open this artifact and process it. We have options for processing it in raw mode, to scan for deleted data, or to simply open the data and start the review. I will select the raw mode, so we can scan for orphaned messages. Now the data is ready to start reviewing. You can see a variety of data points in the artifact. You can see the different parts of the email archive as well as all the data associated with who sent it, when it was created, received, etc. You are also able to see the different attachments associated with the messages. One of the features that is valuable when reviewing email is that you can also look at the data of the email from the RFC header, textual data, HTML data, and so on. The Properties pane in E3 allows files or in this case, attachments to be seen in a variety of different built-in viewer modes. You have a lot of flexibility within E3 to change the sizes of the windows and make the interface work for you. The analysis engines in E3 are found in the content analysis options. This is where you can sort data by file header, do a full text index, OCR data, in a variety of languages as well as use specialized add-on options that allow you to scan images and categorize them by their content. With the threading in E3, you can let those content analysis tasks run and continue to review your data triage results for additional artifacts. After the content analysis process is complete, you can now go through and search the data using a variety of different search techniques. You can use a simple search or go into advanced searches such as Boolean searches as I have demonstrated. Once that information is found, the data can be expanded and reviewed. You can also use the search on specific areas. I have searched a chat database directly. You can search here by screen names, date ranges, etc. You can continue to explore the over 170 artifacts supported by E3 by reviewing the browser data and seeing the specific parsing associated with that data. I can continue with my file system analysis and review the registry. In the registry, there are a lot of different artifacts from network data, devices connected, printers, and portable devices to name a few. You can also review details associated with timelines. There are options to dive into specific Microsoft artifacts as well. As you can see, there is a large range of functions available in this quick overview of E3 processing Windows file systems. E3 also can process mobile devices. In this overview, I will process through an iOS device and some of its artifacts. I have already processed the device in acquisition. One of the advantages of E3 is, I can look at all the different types of data associated with an investigation in a single case. This can make my searches faster to find results in multiple types of evidence. When you review an iOS device, you can see the data that is passed and unpassed. If we jump into the past data, we can see some artifacts such as the browser history and the different artifacts there. You can see details such as the suspended state and the metadata associated with it. 
that can include things such as when it was accessed if they were using incognito mode etc. You can also see other data like health data that can be associated with the device, or an Apple Watch. You can see valuable information like the heart rate, steps, accelerometer data, and even their state of mind. Other data that is unique to iOS is keychain data. I will explore the password keychain. In this keychain data, we can see every single Wi-Fi that this device has been connected to, we can also see the service name, the network, the password, the group type, and the label associated with it when it was created, or if it was modified. Additional data in this area can include internet password data from web forms, passwords, and accounts. You can continue to explore iOS by looking at the installed applications. E3 is going to automatically do a malware suspicion across each application. It will give you the application name, the version, and the malware suspicion that E3 sees, as you have access to the application permissions to know what the end user has allowed or not allowed. Then, we can look at the actual application data such as WhatsApp, Google Maps, or LinkedIn. The details of all these data areas are provided in either past or raw form. Android data can also be processed using E3. Similar parsing is available for apps, and default data associated with Androids. Working with mobile data, you can review all the different areas with parsers, for SQLite, JSON, and PList data. E3 also can process data, from a variety of other sources including cloud data. This data can be captured using keys collected from an evidence source or through credentials that are known. In this example, I will input the credentials for iCloud photo storage. You can see the data authenticate and be captured into E3. You can expand the details once they are collected and they can be reviewed with the analysis options in E3. Review of this data includes access to all the metadata associated with the capture. E3 has some additional cloud options with specific cloud keys. Those include a unique method to capture Google Cloud data. This data can be collected using Google Cloud Authenticator. The data credentials can be input into E3 once they are input, you can attempt to authenticate. If that does not work, you can use the authenticator to process the Google data. This tool allows you to collect the data through Google with some additional steps I will quickly demonstrate. A full tutorial is also available on this channel about this tool. Many different functions can be seen in the E3 tutorials available at Paraben Forensics on YouTube. You can capture data remotely with the Remote Imager, process compliance archives, root Androids, and even capture cloud data remotely, all with different functions available in E3. To start a trial or receive a one on one demonstration, please reach out to us at forensics at paraben.com.